Please be seated. I welcome everyone here to this service this morning in the precious name of Jesus. I bring you greetings from the ancient city of Benin City. Ancient city of Benin. We had a most explosive time in God's presence there as we will be showing to you later on. This morning we shall be looking at the subject of the force of faith. The force of faith. Part 2. Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. Even in thy mouth. And in thy heart. That is the word of faith. Which we preach. The force of faith. Our objective is to understand what faith entails. In this study this morning, we shall trust God to move faith from the mystical realm to the practical realm. Kenneth Hagin once said, I teach faith And or our robots walks faith. What is faith all about? How does it work? How do we work it to produce result? There are many people who feel very stranded because they think they don't know what faith is all about. And they don't think they have enough faith to produce any result. This morning, that matter shall be dissolved. Somebody say aloud, I amen. amen. It needs to be dissolved because faith is important for four reasons, among many others. First, our victory is dependent on our faith. We need faith. We need faith. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, which is our faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Ephesians 6, 16. Whereby you are able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. If faith is not at work, victory is not in view. Secondly, our wholeness, our health, sorry, our life is dependent on our faith, life. The just shall live by his faith. Have a court chapter 2 verse 4. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. The just shall live by his, by faith. Life is at risk. We have faith is not at work. Thirdly, our health and wholeness are dependent on our faith. In Mark chapter 5 and in verse 34, Jesus told the woman with the issue of blood, thy faith has made thee whole. Mark 5, 34. In Luke chapter 17, verse 10, Jesus told the lepers,
sorry, 19, 17, 19. And he said unto him, to that one leper, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. So your faith can determine whether you are well or whether you will be sick. Also, fourthly, your faith determines your stand or your stability in life. Your stand and stability in life are de de dependent on your faith. Romans chapter 11 verse 20. The Bible said, Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Thou standest by faith. Thou standest by faith. You stand by faith. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24. Not for that we have dominion over your faith, but we are helpers of your joy, for by faith you stand. If you are going to stand on your feet in this life, you require faith. Without faith you crash. So I prophesy to someone here today, by the end of this service, your faith is coming alive. Can that amen be louder than that? I said your faith is coming alive. I said your faith is coming alive. I said your faith is coming alive. You believe that shout the loudest amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. So what is the faith process? Number one, now, number one to four are things we dealt extensively with in the first service. So I'm going to brush over them briefly. And I'd like you to get the full message of the first service. Number one is word revelation. Word insight. Faith begins. Where the word is found. Word is. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 said, So then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What God has said about your situation is what builds your faith. It's not what the circumstance said. Not what the devil said. Not what the report said. Every time you have arrived at the point of the word, you have arrived at the point of faith. Word revelation. Like we said in the first service, the word is seed. Mark chapter 4 verse 14, the sower soweth the word. The sower soweth the word. What is the seed all about? Seed is what you sow to get fruit. So we say, any area of life where you need the harvest, where you need to see result, it might be in your spiritual life, in your health, in your finances, in your preservation. In that area, find out what God's word is saying. That becomes the seed. You sow it in the soil of your heart. And it gives you the harvest of your life. For example, any area where you are challenged, look for messages, CDs, materials in that area to charge your faith and give you seed that will produce harvest in that direction. So faith begins with the word revelation. If you are not standing on the word, you are not standing in faith. Say that again. If you are not standing on the word, you are not standing in faith. 
It doesn't matter how sentimental your prayer is. If it is not standing on the word of God, it's not standing on faith. Number two is heart conviction. Heart conviction. The revelation of the word of God brings conviction to your heart. It's designed to bring conviction or belief to your heart. So you saw what God said, then you got convinced. You got convinced. In Mark chapter 5, verse 27, we heard the story of the woman with the issue of blood. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind. She heard something. And she came and touched, for she said, Believe, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. Whatever you heard or whatever you saw from the Bible, the purpose of it is to, is to, is to impart you with belief. The God who changed the story of Abraham can change my story. It impacts you with belief. So we move to heart conviction. And then from heart conviction, to mindset transformation. You saw it in the Bible. You believe it in your heart. Then it changes your mind. It changes the way you think. All of a sudden fear disappears. All of a sudden inferiority disappears. All of a sudden, you, be, you became bolder than before. That was what happened to Peter and John. In Acts chapter 4 verse 13. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John. And perceived that they were previously unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them. That they had been with Jesus Christ. These people... Stayed with Jesus until timidity gave way for audacity. Ay, 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 Woo! Today, I prophesy anything, any mentality that is a, limi a limiting mentality for your destiny is blown away right now. 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 For example, they said everybody in your village, in your community, when they rise to a certain level, either they crash or they die. And then you tell them, but I am not from this community. <laughs> Your mind changed. <laughs> hey! But I am not from this community because if any man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things are become new and all these things are of God. Who has reconciled us to himself and given us the, re the ministry of reconciliation, but I am not from this community. You say our conversation is from above. But that was Colossians chapter 3. Conversation means citizenship. Somebody can be in Nigeria and be a citizen of America. Huh? The economy of Nigeria does not affect American ambassador. He is the ambassador of America to Nigeria. But they don't pay him in Naira. They pay him in his currency. He lives here as if he's living in his country. That is how we are here. That is how your mind changes. 
That is how your mind changes. You begin to think differently. Even though I'm in Nigeria, I am not Nigerian. I am from another country. He didn't say my God shall supply my needs according to the economy of Nigeria. My Is God speaking to somebody here? If your mind has not changed, faith is not in place. Did you see? If your mind has not changed, faith is not in place. On our way back to from Abuj, from Bini yesterday. We almost had two aircrafts arriving at the same time to pick us. I had to be, okay, you stop. This one is coming. Okay, hold on. This one. Okay, stop first. Uh, it is not as you. <laughs> So you saw something from the world. That something impacted a belief in your heart. That belief in your heart changed your mind. You, you began to behave different from those who are from the same village with you. You began to behave different from those who are even in the same church with you. From mindset transformation to vision impartation. It moved just from the realm of thinking now to the realm of picture. You are not just hearing what God is saying now, you are seeing it in picture. God servant Bishop Yedeko said, I am not surprised where we, at where we are now. I will only be surprised if we are not there. It is the same here. Because what you see coming must come. You saw it coming, it must arrive. Are you following what I'm saying here today? It just transforms, it just, it just impacts you with vision. God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 13, and in verse 14 all the way to verse 15. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lord was separated from him, lift up now your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. He's telling a man to see a whole country at once. Is that a physical vision? No. It's a mental vision. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27 concerning Moses. The Bible said, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as someone who was seeing him. Who is invisible? It is when people see the invisible that they step into the impossible. Am I communicating? Seeing the invisible. You are not just seeing. My God shall supply my needs according to his riches in glory. You see the needs supplied. Huh? Psalm 128. Can I read that passage? Blessed is the one that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. You shall eat the labor of your hands. Happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be a fruitful vine. He's giving you a picture, so you see a vine that has fruit. So that is how your wife shall be. And your children like olive plants round about your table. So you see yourself around the table and see your children with you. When God says things, he wants people to see it. That is why the scripture is filled with pictures. 
like a, like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Pictures. So you don't just you don't just think that God is giving you a home. See the home. See the beauty of the home. See your husband lifting you in his hand and turning around. You know, but if you will be, you have to be liftable. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because (laughs) somebody saw the picture of how I lifted my wife some time ago and they went to to the house and asked the husband, you must lift me up. <laughs> Our pastor lifted his wife. You must lift me up. And you see, the volume of the... <laughs> I'm sorry. You must lift me up. So they... Please, I don't, I don't want to, to create any trouble. So the man said, I will definitely lift you up. But the only way I can lift you up under this situation is to lift you in prayers. <laughs> because if I try to lift you, both of us will just end on the floor. <laughs> Let me just lift you in prayers. I mean, whether you like it or not, lifting is lifting. <laughs> I think the prayer lift is even better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, it is well. You know, God likes us in print volumes. Say, Lo, I am with you. He say, You shall be fat and flourishing. There are different scriptures for. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So you see, you, you, you see yourself, and like I said in the first service, when it is time to pray, pray the outcome. See what you are praying. Picture yourself on the wedding day and the marriage. Be seeing the picture and be tonguing in prayer. Just be enjoying your life. Father, I can see it. I can see what I'm talking to you about. I can see how it will look like. And all that your eyes can see, I will put into your hands. Somebody say aloud, Amen. Amen. That is when faith is practical. Practical. You move from the revelation and move into the conviction of the heart, to the mindset transformation, to the vision impartation. And now, we move to the forceful declaration. This is where we'll take a little more, a little time because we haven't dealt with this in this in detail. Forceful declaration. This is forceful, faith-filled declaration of what you believe, what you saw in the world, what you believed, what you can see and picture. You declare it. In Second Corinthians chapter four and in verse thirteen, he said, "We having the same spirit of faith." According as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. You don't believe it until you have spoken it. Declaration is the proof of conviction. If you believe it enough, it will come out of your mouth. You don't even need to rehearse for it. You saw it in the world. You believe it in your heart. You can picture it in your mind. Daniel said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3 verse 16 said, O King Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. The God, if it be so, our God who we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand. They believed it so passionately and they declared. In Numbers chapter 13 and in verse 30, 
when all the other spies said they, they couldn't go and conquer the land, the Bible said, and Caleb steal the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and we pos- and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. When they stepped into the land, the same Caleb, in Joshua chapter 14 verse 10 or 12, he told Joshua, you say you remember? Behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years. Even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this year 45, 85 years old. I am strong as I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. And as my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Therefore, give me this mountain. I know the Anakims are there. I will wipe them out. That is an 85 year old man speaking like 25. I have enough strength to wipe them out. And Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb. Because what you say determines what you see. Confession determines possession. Am I speaking to anybody here at all? In 1 Samuel chapter 17, before Goliath, and in verse 37, David spoke. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the power of the lion and out of the power of the bear, he would deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said, go. And the Lord be with thee. And in verse 45, David began to speak. He said, you come to me against me. And David said to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver you into my hands and I will smite you and take your head from you. And yet he didn't have a sword in his hand. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with spare or sword or and spare, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Your, your destiny is at the mercy of your declaration. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your destiny is at the mercy of your declaration. Until your mouth is opened, your future remains closed. Until you can open your mouth to declare boldly and audaciously, your future remains a closed case. I'm not communicating at all. David declared, Job declared in Job chapter 14 verse 14 he said, if a man die, shall he live again all the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my change come I am not going to die, I cannot die, things must change and I will see the change is that how most people talk today? I am tired, this country is so hard everything is so tough is death not better? Nobody saw more disastrous things than Job. Lost everything. Yet he said, I am waiting until change comes. What is not declared is not cleared. If you want to clear it, declare it. Do you, do you know how they used to clear things at the, at the port in, 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 in Lagos and several? What is not declared cannot be cleared. What is not declared will not be confirmed. God confirms what man declares. In Numbers chapter 14 verse 28, he said, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do. In Isaiah chapter 44 verse 26, the Bible said, concerning God that confirmed the word of his servant and performed the counsel of his messengers that said to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited. And to the cities of Judah, you shall be built. Somebody say, say it. Say, I shall say it. I shall declare it. And clear it. 
Say, I shall declare to clear. I shall declare and it shall be clear. Hallelujah. Number six is corresponding action. All faith must be backed with action. When declaration, declaration is merged with action, what you have is manifestation. When declaration is merged with action, the outcome is manifestation. And in the journey of faith, action is the switch of power. Action. The woman with the issue of blood did not just believe. She didn't just say she heard of Jesus. She said in her heart, if I can touch. She didn't stop there. She went ahead and touched. Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 29. She did not just hear of Jesus. She did not just believe in her heart. She did not just say it. She went ahead and did something. And the issue of blood stopped. In Luke chapter 17, Jesus saw some lepers. In verse 12, he told them to go and show themselves to the priests. What's the meaning of that? Show yourself to the priests. Please go and testify that you are healed. How can I go and testify that I'm healed when the leprosy is still there? But they moved. And as they went, they were cleansed. Action is the switch of power in the journey of faith. As they moved, Luke chapter 17 verse 12 to verse 14. As they went, when he saw them, he said, go, show yourself to the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Not before they went. Somebody say, Amen. Listen to this. Faith is potent only with action. It is impotent without action. Faith is potent only with action. It is impotent where there is no action. Hallelujah. 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 I said hallelujah. James chapter 2 verse 17 and 18. James 2 17 and 18. Even so faith if it had not works is dead. Being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my works by, my faith by my works. Now jump to verse 26. He said, you believe, and you have done well. Even the devils believe. But they don't see anything. He said, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is what? Dead. Also, somebody say amen. Somebody say louder, amen. Somebody say the loud most, amen. There are two dimensions of the works of faith. Number one is the work of responsibility. Responsibility. The works of responsibility. What does that mean? That is in out what God says you should do for him to do what he, what he says he will do. Doing your part for God to do his part. Am I communicating? Like this. I use this all the time. You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water. So you are coming to God trusting him to bless you then you find out where to serve him so that he can bless you. That is part of the works of faith. Doing what God wants you to do to commit him so he can do what he's meant to do is part of the works of faith. The work of responsibility. He said, if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, he shall set you on high. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse and prove me if I will not open the windows of heaven. So you find out what to do 
for God to do his own works of responsibility. The second dimension of work is works of manifestation. Or call it works of reality. That is living in the reality of what you are believing God to do for you. Living in that reality. I believe that God is, my God shall supply my needs according to his riches in glory. So I refuse to look up to mortal man. So I refuse to act like a beggar. I believe that God has healed me so I refuse to lie down for the sickness. Did you hear what I just said? I refuse to lie down for the sickness. I believe that God has a job for me so I refuse to sit at home. I stepped out of the house. I dress, knock my tie, carry my briefcase, polish my shoe, and if I cannot get shoe polish, what is anointing oil waiting for? And I hit the road. Why? This is works of reality. I believe there is a job for me. There is employment for me somewhere. I don't want to remain at home. I am going to meet it. They say if your ship does not come to the shore. Swim and meet it. Are you here somebody? Shout the loudest. Amen. So you have the works of responsibility where you do what God expects for you to do and then you have the works of reality where you, you, you function in the reality of your expectation. You function in the reality. Of your expectation. I am going to build churches for God. But before I build churches. Let me buy windows. Let me buy doors. Let me buy sound. Let me buy seats. Let me just buy a block. Before I build the whole structure. You are walking in the reality. Of what you are expecting God to do for you. I prophesy for somebody here. Something is changing in your life. And you believe that say loud amen. You believe that shout the loudest amen. So that is corresponding action. Number seven is excited celebration. Somebody give the Lord a shout of celebration. Excited celebration. In Psalm 106 verse 12, say they believe this word, they sang his praise. In First Peter chapter 1 verse 8, First Peter chapter 1 verse 8, say whom we have not seen we love, even though we see him not yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I heard that the apostle of faith, Metrigo's word, was always excited. There is a joy that faith brings. There is a praise that happens with faith. You know, before Jesus ever multiplied the five loaves and two fishes in John chapter 6 verse 11, he gave thanks first. That is the praise of faith. That is the celebration of faith. In John chapter 11 verse 41, at the tomb of Lazarus, before he ever prayed for Lazarus, he gave thanks first. Father, I thank you because you have heard me. Listen, if you saw it in the Bible, and you believe it in your heart and it has changed your mind and you can see the picture of it ahead of you and you can declare it audaciously and you can move in the reality of it it will explode in joy and celebration you will just be effortlessly celebrated you will be walking in on cloud nine and people will wonder what is happening to this man I can't see any change around him he said, them, don't worry, I can see what you cannot see. Not everything available is visible. You didn't hear what I just said. 
Not everything available is what? Your heart is available. Can you see it? Your lungs and your livers are available. Can you see them? The fact that you don't see them, are they not existing? Oxygen is existing now that you are breathing it. Can you see it? Your future is existing now. Are you seeing it physical now? But it is there. Your husband, your wife, they are there. Your children are there. That you cannot see them does not mean they don't exist. And you can celebrate them into manifestation. That's one thing you must know. People who know the world, who know God, who have seen something out of the world, who are convinced, they move with joy, they move with excitement. There is something about them that just makes them. You know, one day, Papa Yedeko said they were in the school of, no, in, in between airports. A flight was cancelled. And uh, they went and met the man. He sent one of the pastors. Tell that man who has a private jet. A man was at the airport with a private jet. He said, go and tell that man, give us a lift in your private jet before our own comes. <laughs> we are going to Lagos. Our Augusta said, you should give us a lift in your private jet before our own comes. The man looked at them and laughed. So you people can come, all of you. He carried them free of charge. It has happened to him twice from aviation school in Zara. You walk with a realm of audacity. Because you know he's coming. Did he come or not? He came bereketeshous. Overcame sir. Something that you cannot yet see, but you are celebrating already, is coming for you now. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. You are saying amen. Say a louder believer. Say amen. Now, there are two things. Please take your seat. Two things that your celebration, your joy does. Regarding your results. Number one. Why do we praise? Number one. We praise to confirm our belief. We praise to confirm. If somebody who has the ability to do something for you say, I have a big house for you in Metama. And this is a person who has houses like the way you have shoes or shirts. Will you say, oh God, let me see the house first. No. What will you say? Thank you. We praise to confirm belief. Psalm 106 verse 12 already told us they believe this word, they sang his praise. We pray to confirm that we believe that we are healed. We believe that what God said about us must come to pass. We, we praise to confirm belief. Number two, we praise and give thanks to activate release. When you praise and you give thanks, you activate release. When you say thank you, it drops. First Timothy chapter 4 and in verse 4. For every creature, anything that God has in store for you is good. It is nothing to be refused. And it is received with thanksgiving. If it be received. There are things that God has already made available but have not, people have not received because there hasn't been thanksgiving. Am I communicating? If you can thank enough and appreciate enough what God has released for you will drop for you. One day, I was traveling to the UK. It was close to our May convention. And I was in a trance. That kind of half awake, half asleep. That sleep or awake junction. You know that junction. And I saw like lorries and like trucks in the air. 
Right in the spirit realm, right up there, all plenty and covered. Lord, what are these? He said, these are the supplies of the people. It has, it has been released from heaven, but it has not dropped for the people. What do we do? He said, let it be released. That was before that convention. I think I said it in that convention. There are many things hanging for many in the air. But they are received with praise. Received with thanksgiving. And so, what is yours today shall be released. And finally, the next step is steadfast determination. That is, you have seen it in the word of God. Mm. It has impacted your heart with belief. It has changed the way you think. It has become the picture you see. You have declared forcefully based on what you believe. You have acted accordingly. Responsibility actions, reality actions. You have praised and given thanks. The next thing is steadfast determination. That is unwavering determination. Unflinching persistence. Unflinching. Unflinching. What Job said, I will wait until my change comes. What the scripture said, having done all to stand, stand. Having done all to stand, stand. Ephesians chapter 6, I think it was 12, there about. What Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 Yes, I mean, Ephesians 6, 13, we have for take unto you the whole armor of God that he may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, verse 14, stand therefore, having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having done all, to stand. Stand therefore. Somebody say aloud, amen. In Hebrews chapter 10, very good scripture, 10, 38, sorry, 10, 35 to 39. Hebrews 10, 35 to 39. It says, cast not therefore, cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. You need to be patient. For yet a little while, he that shall come will come. Whatever you are expecting will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back from faith, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Somebody say, I am not changing position. I did. Say, what is coming for me must come. What God has promised me must happen. So this is unflinching persistence. What they call pertinacity. Endurance. Resolve. Tenacity. Firmness of purpose. Doggedness. Staying power. Obstinacy. Bulldog tenacity. Stubbornness of the bulldog. I am not giving way. I am not giving in. I am not giving out. I am not giving up. I did. Somebody lift your right and say, I am not giving up. I am not giving in. I am not giving way. I am not giving out. I am here. Say it again. I am not giving up. I am not giving in. I am not giving out. I am not giving up. I am not giving way. I am here. Take your seat and let me round up now. And listen to this as I round up. Persistence does two things for you. First, it wears out resistance. It tires out the devil. When Job said, I'll wait until my change comes. 
Then the devil said, you better give up on this child. And secondly, persistence keeps you standing until the result is due, due, due. There are times and seasons in God, at times, some things you think are ready for you, you are not ready for them. That is why I said in Galatians chapter 6 verse 9, be not weary. Don't get tired in doing the right thing. Don't get tired in believing God. Don't get tired in standing because in due season, so there is due, something that is due. When it is time, when it is ripe for it, you shall reap if you don't get tired. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Every spirit of discouragement, I call it gone right now. So, moving from revelation, word revelation, to heart conviction, from heart conviction to mind transformation, from mind transformation to vision impartation, to from vision impartation to forceful declaration, from forceful declaration to corresponding action, from corresponding action to excited celebration, and on to steadfast examination, I created what is called the faith force cycle. Faith force. Here is it on the screen. The faith force cycle is the cycle that works faith to release the force of it to produce result. Am I communicating? How the process where you walk faith to release the force that faith carries in order to produce results. Now, put it back on the screen. So you move from word revelation on there, up there. And then the arrow moves to heart conviction. So what you see from the word is going to... Don't, 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 don't um, picture it here because I'm standing here so you don't put me in your camera. Okay? When I'm off the way, you can. Somebody's light is on just off that for now. So, you move from word revelation and then what you saw from the word convicted, convinced your heart, gave you belief. And then it changes your mind. Mindset transformation. And then from mindset transformation, your, your picture of things change. Your vision is impacted. You, you begin to see the reality of what you are expecting. And then from there, you begin to declare forcefully the devil that can kill me before my time does not exist. I must fulfill my days. And then, you put on corresponding action. What does God want me to do? And you are doing what God wants you to do. Then you begin to walk in the reality. And then from there, you celebrate and praise. Yes, he has done it. He has never failed before. He didn't fail Abraham, he cannot fail me. He didn't fail Job, he cannot fail me. Then from that celebration, you proceed in determination. And as I'm celebrating, I am waiting until my answer comes. Am I communicating? After you waited for a while and it appears as if it is getting delayed, you return back to the cycle. From that steadfast determination, you move back to more word. Lord, is there something you want me to see I haven't seen? You charge yourself with more light. Charge yourself with more revelation. Charge yourself with more insight. And then you move to greater conviction. And then you move to stand up on your feet. Before you go around the second time, the devil must give up. Before you go around the second time, the devil must give up. Before you go around the third time, the devil must give up. Place it on the screen now. If you want, you can take the, you can capture it now. From word revelation to heart conviction. Now the second one is Romans chapter 10 verse 10, not 10, 8. Heart conviction, the cycle. I don't know how you change it, but maybe later. It's Romans chapter 10, the scripture reference under heart conviction. It's Romans 10, 10. And now you move to heart conviction. And then mindset transformation. And then vision impartation. Then forceful declaration. Corresponding action. A certain celebration. Steadfast determination. Then you move back. Maybe the light I had before was not bright enough. Let me get brighter light. Let me get sharper light. Let me get stronger light. 
I now prophesy to somebody here today in the name that is above every name. Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord. God will cause you to see out of scripture what you have not seen before that will move your faith to the next level. You believe that shall the Lord say amen. You believe that shall the Lord say amen. You believe that shall the Lord say amen. You believe that shall the Lord most say amen. Say in the name of Jesus, open my eyes, Lord, that I may behold wondrous things out of your book. Open my eyes, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Did you receive something today? Do you believe you are returning back with your testimony? All right, lift up your two hands everywhere you are. Lift up your two hands. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. Let's honor him. Let's adore him. Let's magnify him. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. We give you the worship. We give you the supremacy. We give you the dominion. We give you the sovereignty. Thank you, Adonai. Thank you, Elion. Thank you, Mekadesh. Yes, 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 yes. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name. One of the things that is on that list, we can do that one now. That is the excited celebration. How many of you can see everything is turning around? Something is changing already in your life. Please, I want you to be patient and don't be in a hurry to move. In the next few minutes, we should be true. And just give God five minutes of celebration. After that, some declarations will follow and then we shall be said. Are you ready? Give the Lord a shout of celebration. Tell some, somebody by yourself, say something is already changing in my life. Something is changing. Let's go.